Hello everyone, this is Pradeep Yamula. Welcome to my uh, new video. It's been a long, long time since I recorded the video and this time I'm uh, recording from my home. So hopefully I'll be able to record more videos like this and upload. So uh, let's get right to the topic. In today's uh, video, I'd like to talk about DC generators. And as you see on your screen, uh, there's already a question written down and we'll try to solve some of these uh, questions. And the idea is by solving these kind of problems, we'll be able to understand conceptually how the DC generator or the DC machine works. Okay, so uh, if you notice, I've just marked here an example 26.12. So this is the example uh, problem from a textbook and uh, link to the textbook or the the title and authors of the textbook, I will leave it in the description box. It is the textbook uh, called Electrical Technology by B. L. Tereja. So uh, let's start this problem and hopefully by seeing this problem we'll learn something. And I'll be also solving more problems in this problem only this one, uh, in this video only this one problem I solved but then uh, you can expect more uh, short videos like this with each video solving one problem. So let's get started. Uh, what do we have here? It always helps uh, to uh, draw the circuit diagram of whatever you are trying to work out. So you see here a separately excited generator. A separately excited generator, obviously a DC generator because we are, that's the topic that we are doing. So a separately excited DC generator, let me draw it. So this is the field winding. So F and FF is usually the symbol used for the field winding. Then uh, there will be an armature winding. So I will draw the armature of the DC machine. And then small resistance, I will put it here. So this is the RA, armature resistance. This is actually the resistance inside the, ar uh, inside the armature. But then for circuits uh, representation purpose, we draw the RA outside. And then this is the DC generator. And then uh, it also has a load. Uh, remember, this is a generator, so the output is electrical and the input is mechanical. So the electrical output, so let's see what is it. When running at 1000 RPM, supplied current of 200 amperes at 125 volts. So, so this is the load or this is the output. So the voltage at the output is 125 volts. And this is the positive and negative side, for example. And the current is 200 amperes, okay. And also, it is another information. It is running at 1000 RPM. So let me draw that. So this is the input. So this is some kind of a prime mover. It is rotating it, and N1 is 1000 RPM. So RPM, as you know, is revolutions per minute. So I am rotating this armature at this speed and I am generating 200 amperes of current to meet the load of 125 volts. The question is, what will be the load current when the speed drops to 800 RPM? So what he is saying, due to some reason, this N1 is dropping to N2 at 800 RPM. So when the speed reduces, naturally you will expect that the EMF induced will reduce and therefore uh, the voltage output also might reduce. We'll, we'll see that. Uh, if the field current is unchanged, okay, so that's a relief to know that the field current is unchanged. So I can simply now write EMF generated is proportional to speed. So otherwise EMF generates is proportional to the product of the flux and the speed, but then since the field current is unchanged, this relation holds. Uh, given the brush drop is 2 volts, so there is a 2 volt brush drop. So uh, what is brush drop? Whenever the armature is there, it is connected uh, to the commutating segments and there are brushes through which it is connected and there will be a voltage drop in the brush and it is given it as 2 volts. So it is 1 volt at each brush, I assume. So just let's write it here 2 volts so that we don't forget it. Brush drop. Uh, what else is given? Armature resistance is 0 0.04 ohms. Okay, 
So I think we have more or less written uh, everything that is given in the question. We used all the information, put it in the form of a figure. Now, uh, obviously, I can now calculate what is EG1. So EG1 is nothing but EMF generated. So that will be 2 volts, that is the brush drop, plus the voltage drop in the armature resistance, which will be 0 0.04 into 200. This is the voltage drop in the armature plus the output voltage which is 125 volts. So basically this will be my voltage. I think I can right away multiply it. So I can cancel out zeros and then this and then this is 8 volts plus 2 volts is 10 volts. 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 plus 125 is 135 volts. So for a generated EMF of 135 volts, the speed uh, corresponding to it is 1000 RPM. And now the question is, what will be the, what is the question, let's go back to it. What will be the load current when the speed drops to 800 RPM? Okay, let's get by calculating what is EG2. So, proportionally EG2 will reduce. So, and the proportion of reduction is uh, this one. So, if the, I think it is going to the 80%. So, let's calculate that 125 into 800 by thousand. Remember we just said that this EMF generator is proportional to speed so speed is dropping EMF should also drop so that's why I'm multiplying with this. So how much is this? Uh, let me just refer to my calculator and then I'll uh, come back. So it is 108 volts as, as what my calculator says. Now if the EMF is 108 volts and how much will be the output current is the question. Now, before we calculate the output current, we can also now look at the load. What will be the resistance of the load? Because you know that 125 volts and 200 amperes, the voltage and current into this, I can find out the load resistance. So let me do it here. RL, load resistance is 125 volts divided by 200 amperes. So this will be how much? Uh, what my calculator says is 0 0.625 ohms. Now this resistance, if I if I redraw the circuit, okay, with speed equal to 800 rpm so we'll get a simplified circuit something like this so eg so eg is 108 volts we just calculated remember and then the drop drop is 2 volts in the brushes and then there will be some drop here uh, 0.04 ohms is the resistance and then the load resistance we just calculated it is 0.625 so now uh, what is the voltage available and how much current will be flowing is the question. So which is very easy to calculate from this. The net voltage is 106 volts and uh, because 2 volts is dropping and the net resistance is 0 0.04 plus 0 0.625 so which is 106 volts. So this will be my armature current uh, divided by 0.665. And that comes out to be, uh, let me use my calculator, so I bring out the calculator here, 106 divided by 0.665, so it is 159.398, or I could round it up to 159.4 amperes, so this is what is the current. Uh, what about the output voltage? Although it is not asked in the question, uh, terminal voltage, VL or load voltage is nothing but IA into RL. So 159.4 multiplied by 0 0.625. So what is that? Into 0 0.625, I'm getting 99.62 volts. So 99.62 volts. So Naturally, you see earlier the voltage was 125 volts at the terminals, but now we are getting less voltage because 
the prime mover speed has reduced to only 800 rpm. So what are the key learnings from this? Uh, EMF generated is proportional to speed. This is one new thing when flux is constant. And then you can have a simple circuit that is uh, RA will be in series with load resistance and, and, and we use simple uh, voltage loop, Kirchhoff voltage law to solve for the currents. So I hope you learned something from this video. We'll meet uh, again in a different video. Bye.